Okay. So um, I'll be talking about things that maybe in, in specifics there's going to be uh, people that know better the details. But one thing I have the privilege of having is a, a view, an open view on uh, what happens when a large company embraces WordPress and, uh, and the, the aspects that, that overall impact the business. So about me, I was already introduced so I can actually skip it. What, one thing is that um, my colleagues say I'm, I'm, I'm actually a fusion of a marketer, of an IT, because I have a past experience as, a, as IT, and also as a designer, because that's the job I do usually on Fridays, because uh, we, don't, we still have, don't, don't have a designer in, in, my, in my company, and I have to design my own stuff. <laughs> and uh, so uh, in November t 2016, uh, um, I was asked to, to start working on this project, the uh, launch of a low-cost mobile operator. And uh, they gave us one month time to go live, and which wasn't much. And uh, so we we just chose to to speed start on a th series of things. So first thing, you know, use what you know. Uh, we had competence on, on the LAMP stack, so uh, something based on PHP, WordPress, and WooCommerce on top of it. Uh, and uh, you know. A classic operator's website is uh, is made by a, a home page where you sh show your products, showcase the e-commerce where you purchase it, and um, the recharge of the credit because uh, especially here in Italy, it's typical to have rechargeable SIMs, and the, and the customer area where you uh, manage your your uh, subscription. So uh, we adopted this approach: first, do it because we had very little time, and then do it better, which is actually a quote from uh, Osmani from Google. And so why WordPress? Well, first of all, uh, we had a very low budget and it's free. It was quick to deploy, PHP based. We had competence uh, to handle it. Uh, we bought a professional template and we uh, speed started thanks to that, uh, which is a really, really good choice in the short term, really bad choice in, in the long term. Um, of course, we needed a CMS because they had people doing different jobs, so you can't you have to have a, a distributed way of uh, updating content. And, uh, and WordPress is, is proven. I, I was using WordPress for more than ten years, so I, I I knew it pretty well. And so you know we were confident we could do the job on on this platform. So um, in the digital life cycle, we adopt uh, some tools, and maybe this is useful to to see. Uh, like when we we develop and we keep our repository on an instance of GitLab. Uh, to do our tests, we have automated most of our tests in uh, Catalan Studio, which is a, um, a free product we're using to do testing, automated testing. And uh, we also use a Catalan plugin, which uh, allows you to record uh, uh, interactions on, on the website and export them uh, even in... Uh, in Python, so we have scripts uh, that run and test the uh, functionality of the website uh, to warn us if the uh, things goes wrong. And uh, to deploy and, and measure things, we have as a monitoring tool, for example, we use Pingdom. Uh, we use, of course, Google Analytics because that's in uh, and uh, that's very useful. We use Kibana to analyze logs and uh, do end-to-end -end monitoring of our processes. So if you buy a SIM on the website, uh, until it is delivered, we, ha we have all the system it crosses and then see if uh, there's a problem of something in the middle that uh, breaks and it's not working. Um, we, we're working, we're starting to work on um, Kubernetes. Uh, we haven't employed it yet. We would really like to. And uh, for design, well, we use various tools, but um, as I told you, we, had, we started on uh, Avada as a template. So uh, for monitoring, well, first of all, uh, we can monitor website performances um, through the reports of our CDN provider. Uh, a large company like ours needs a CDN. This is one of the things you can't, can't do without. And um, this is very useful because you can see the traffic on, uh, on the outside and you can see what are the hits on, on, uh, internally. A CDN offloads more or less 80% of your traffic so that means you have to handle a, a, a smaller amount of traffic and it, and it also protects you from attacks. 
uh, we monitor our API calls. This is a screenshot from Kibana. Uh, so these are uh, our APIs, numbers of requests, numbers of failed requests. We can, uh, we can check if uh, the failed requests grow high. Mainly they're just because people inputted wrong, wrong data, like they try to recharge a, a number which is not valid, which happens. Uh, but still, you know, the API gives an error and we monitor it. Uh, of course, we monitor the uptime. Um, and you also, and you also have to monitor page speed. Uh, page speed, page weight uh, is, is very, very important. It, it determines, you know, experience, but it also determines uh, the load you have on uh, on the CDN, which you pay uh, for bandwidth, so that's money, and also on the load you get on your servers. So it's very important to do some, uh, you know, house house cleaning every now and then. Keep sizes very as, as small as possible. Um, Plus, you know, you have to monitor all the rest. So I was, uh, as I was telling you, we monitor purchases, uh, recharges of the SIM, customer area activities. Uh, we do quite a lot of monitoring in our customer area because, uh, and also in the, in the purchase proce process, because if you see uh, there's uh, phases in which the customer uh, is, is slow, you can actually optimize the experience and, uh, and improve it. Of course, uh, we also, have a series of scripts that do monitoring of uh, coherence of, of uh, the, the information our REST API uh, respond. Uh, for example, we have a REST API for our, our app. And, um, and since there's uh, information like the number of minutes of an offer and things like that, we check that it's coherent because it could be the editor uh, who, who's entered that product has made a mistake and has put the wrong uh, number of minutes on it. And so you see different minutes on the app with respect to the site. Um, of course, we use uh, Google Search Console to optimize uh, our SEO presence. And we, we send alerts a lot. Uh, we use Slack. Uh, we have web, web hooks for practically all, all the monitoring stuff go, ends up in, in a, a dedicated Slack account. Uh, sometimes email, sometimes telegram. We've used also telegram for th some of the things. Um, so the web architecture, just to summarize, uh, in our case we, ha we have a CDN provider and it's Akamai. We have of course a firewall. We have a, a load balancer cluster, which uh, in this case is F F5. And currently we have um, 12 front ends. Uh, depends on, on your context, uh, in our case it, it was it matched uh, in the the blades that were underneath. So we have we have the, all the, all the front ends on different blades, uh, and uh, we have uh, a dedicated server where we we use the PHP admin. So you don't see it from the outside. It's just one of the parallel instances, but we from the inside can access to PHP to the administration administration functions, and otherwise uh, from the outside you don't. A MySQL cluster we we have. Uh, two read-only and one read-write. And the behind that, for authentication, we will use LDAP and all our API services. Uh, for the app, we have a dedicated uh, infrastructure. We started out that we were sharing infrastructure with, with web and app, uh, but the numbers of uh, app went really high, uh, and so it was creating problems, so we decided to divide. When, you know, you, it's, divide and conquer is always a good philosophy. Uh, so if you divide things, you, you have less interactions and you can manage things better. Uh, the app is, uses a uh, REST API to acquire content to, to, you can also purchase services through the app, uh, through the REST API. So um, this is a, the part I hope you, you're most interested in. What, what are the lessons we learned? Because in two years, you know, you have, you learn a few lessons. So first of all, it's, uh, you know, you have to offload. Offload all you can, and so it's important to have a CDN, and it's important to have a cache plug plugin. Those are two things you have to have. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you just put a plain WordPress uh, instance online, even if you have 12 servers, and uh, it just will crash as soon as you have, uh, I don't know, 400 concurrent uh, sec sessions, and in, 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 it'll suffer a lot. If you have um, cache, you have less uh, requests to the MySQL database, and so its uh, performance go way up. The CDN, as I was telling you before, offloads more or less 80% of the traffic, so that, that's also 
very important. And the CDN has also a great impact on user experience because uh, we, we've tested, we've used different CDNs. Currently, we, we're using Akamai, and the great thing about Akamai is that they have a, a lot of servers uh, distributed across geographically. Uh, they have servers in, in all the web farms of mo mobile operators, uh, ISPs, and so on. So the perceived uh, performance of the website is really good because you have your server right there. Right, uh, and, uh, and the other thing uh, they also do is they uh, deliver an HTTP2, so on mobile, uh, it's also very, very fast. Um, after you offload, you have to distri distribute the remaining load. So you have more front-end servers, and uh, uh, you can choose to have uh, a few very powerful servers or many less powerful. It depends on, on the infrastructure you have already. Uh, we decided to distribute them on more servers because we had more blades. So they don't, they're not physically on the same hardware. Um, and then, uh, of course, you have to have a hardware load balancer to distribute uh, traffic well ac across those servers. And a MySQL cluster um, is useful, and HyperDB is very, very good to uh, uh, access tables in, on the read-only instances and on the read-write. Uh, so you actually distribute the load of the, of the um, MySQL uh, cluster also. Uh, I think also WordPress uses a HyperDB uh, for their main website, and I think it's a really good product. So maintenance. You must consider your database like a, uh, like a garden, and so you have to uh, keep it clean because it, it tends to fill in with stuff. I, uh, we have just monitoring of uh, how tables grow and um, strange things happen. You update a plugin and, and a table just goes uh, bonkers. It, 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 it grows really quick. Um, so you, you don't have to let it overgrow. So we, we did a few things like um, since uh, WooCommerce uh, puts uh, all your purchases inside the Whoopi Posts uh, table, Whoopi Posts Meta, and so on. We have a process which uh, acquires uh, the order and uh, deletes it. Uh, so we don't keep, the, keep our orders on, on the WordPress instance. They're imported on a different platform. So uh, that allows us to have uh, uh, Whoopi Posts uh, and Whoopi Posts Meta's uh, really small tables, and they're much more performant. And in the beginning, we didn't do that. And, and the, the performance was just going always slower every day. Because uh, you know you can maybe acquire maybe 500, 1,000 customers a day, and and you know PostMeta has many records for each order, and that's a lot of stuff. So they grow really quick. You have to be very careful with plugins. You before using them, you have to also stress test them and see the performance. You have to also verify their impact on DB. Like uh, we're using Yoast and. Uh, and it was creating um, a lot of uh, records on the database for each uh, order, which actually don't need to be optimized for SEO. Uh, so, because it considered it other as as uh, any other content, and so it was creating the records to optimize SEO of the orders. But of course, it's not important. So, well, our choice was to, to keep the orders right away from the platform directly, so that that solved the, the problem beforehand. Um, keep things updated, so you have to update your software stack, and it's a high priority when it's a benefit. Last year I was here and I, I listened to a few talks, I heard about the performance of, uh, H, uh, of PHP 7.2, and uh, we tested it in, uh, in our labs, and it was four, four times more performant with, with the previous versions we had. And so, you know, four times is a lot, that, that means you, you, you have four times the hardware capability you had before. And, and of course, you have to update WordPress and uh, plugins. So, and also, there's there's always space to to improve, you know, for improvement. Uh, so, like uh, everything, single thing can be improved. So, CDN. Uh, what we always do is t take a look at the stats and uh, find out if there's any pages which are uh, have load uh, offload uh, percentages. And um, and we work uh, with a provider to have it uh, cached more aggressively because in many cases it can be cached, um, and it, it helps. It, it keeps that that eighty percent 
um, maybe you can bring it to 85 or something. It's always less, less tough. Web server, uh, we've evaluated working on Nginx, on Apache. We've, uh, we've also uh, tried using Nginx as a reverse proxy. Currently, we're using directly Apache because uh, it actually is less complicated for a series of uh, uh, technical issues. And uh, since the rest of the uh, infrastructure is uh, handling traffic so well, we, we're, we don't have this urgency. But in case we need, we, we could move to Nginx, which, which is quicker, but less versatile than, than Apache. As far as the database, we're using MySQL, uh, but we could consider also moving to MariaDB. Uh, it's more performant. In our case, it, it's not good, but maybe in other contexts uh, it can help. Um, of course, PHP, as I told you, you know, 7.2 7 was a, a big improvement. And also, one could try using HHVM, uh, which is developed by, by Facebook. Um, in our case, we tried it. It didn't actually improve performances too much. Um, it was more or less the same as uh, PHP 7.2. So we stuck with uh, 7.2. Software, you know, as I was telling you, 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 you can also improve maybe if you find a, a caching plugin that's, that works better. Um, that that can help. You know, if it's better than the one you're using now because sometimes caching plugins have a few uh, problems and you have to be careful with them. You also have to be very very careful with the configuration. Like um, one time, a colleague of mine changed um, an option in the store locator, and uh, all the platform crashed crashed completely because it changed uh, the approach. Uh, the Currently, the, uh, the store locator searches after you enter the page because it, it asks you to get localized, and then it, it searches. It was searching beforehand, so as soon as you went to the page, it searched once, and then it searched the second time after it geolocalized you. So it was doubling the number of, of, uh, of searches, uh, and the first time it didn't know exactly where you were. So uh, it, it actually uh, had us, uh, you know, it put us in a difficult situation. And uh, it took us some time to find out what was going wrong. Um, also, one thing we, we have to do, we haven't done it yet, is to build a custom high-performance theme, uh, because commercial themes um, aren't, aren't actually as light as you could, uh, could want, and uh, you need to do one. And um, we count on embracing Gutenberg as soon as it's more mature. We've been trying it uh, a bit. We need a few more features in it, and I think they'll be coming into Gutenberg. So um, I think uh, it, it, could, it is the correct approach. So uh, from my favorite book, <laughs> so long and sang thanks for WordPress. And um, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'll feel free to, to ask. Questions? No, you're all hungry, yeah? <laughs> okay. Eh? C'è domanda? O mangiamo? Ah. Uguale. Poi okay. se mai traduco in inglese. Aspetta, aspetta, aspetta. Allora, um, una domanda poco tecnica. Uh, la scelta di WordPress è, um, è stata fatta esclusivamente dal tuo team? Uh, vi siete dovuti confrontare con altre strutture aziendali o siete stati completamente autonomi nello sceglierlo? Ti faccio questa domanda, ti spiego perché. Anch'io uh, lavoro in una grande struttura, in particolare un ente pubblico, lavoro come consulente, o mi sono trovato a proporre WordPress per tutta una serie di motivi oggettivamente validi, eccetera, eccetera, e a volte ci sono state resistenze eh, in ambienti, diciamo così, non tecnici, per, un, per il fatto che WordPress è, ha una fama di strumento alla portata di tutti. Se è alla portata di tutti, vuol dire che non è così buono come gli strumenti che sono molto difficili da usare e quindi sono migliori. Mm. La mia domanda era solo questa. Eh. Allora, intanto rispondo in italiano, poi magari lo faccio anche in inglese. Eh, 
La scelta di WordPress è stata proprio mia, nel senso che e la nostra IT è stata contentissima per uno del marketing che decideva qual è la piattaforma da usare, così al limite era la colpa sua, perché questo diciamo che non dispiace mai poter dare la colpa a qualcun altro. Uh, noi siamo una realtà molto molto piccola per cui diciamo, il marketing prende anche, fa anche molta roba, uh, che ne so, il GDPR me lo sono seguito da solo, cioè che, mh, essendo pochi devi fare tante cose e avere tanti cappelli. Um, so he, he was asking uh, if the choice of WordPress uh, was, uh, who, who took the choice uh, to use WordPress and uh, because in some companies, you know, not, not, every, not many companies are willing to choose WordPress because it's maybe considered too basic as a, of a platform. And uh, so I just, it was, it was my choice at, at the time and, and, and RIT was very happy to have marketing take a choice for the platform, so it would be my, my fault and not theirs. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we're going to lunch then. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.